You're listening to Keeping It 100 with Mel and Bruce, sponsored by the 100 Black Men of Las Vegas. What they see is what they'll be. I'm Mel Tiller, your host. I'm thrilled to be with you. And today we have an exciting guest. We're going to talk about a lot of interesting things, all the things that he's done, business. We're going to talk about his entertainment empire. His name is MC Nice. MC Nice. Welcome to the show. What's going down, family? It's all good, man. I'm happy to be here. You know, um, you out of you out of Vegas, right? Yes, we that? are. Yeah, you know, I, I was in a group, and before we get into our interview, I was in a group called Kansas Cali back in early 2000, and we were based out of Vegas. So oh, wanted, all right, all right. Yeah, so, so you 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 are familiar with the fabulous strip and what I call one of the greatest cities in the world. Yeah, one of the greatest cities for food. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> for yeah, food, but, for entertainment. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. The, the casinos. <laughs> Listen, we can talk a lot about Vegas and how wonderful it is. Cause oh, it's I spent much it. time there, so you're right. <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. So I, I remember performing at the Hop before they got rid of it. You know, the yeah, Hop yeah, is no yeah. longer there when Club C2K and Blue Notes was there. So, you know, it was a while, but yeah. Oh no! I, hey, we 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 appreciate people who love Las Vegas because I certainly do. Now, <laughs> let's talk a little bit. Of, let's talk about, a little bit about you. You are doing some great things. I want to start out talking about your radio station. You um, are you are a trailblazer in that idiom. You are a trailblazer as far as being an entrepreneur, a business owner. Talk to us about your radio station. So uh, the radio station is God's House of Hip Hop. We were the first Christian hip hop, Latin Christian hip hop and gospel rap station uh, to be uh, recognized by BDS before BDS shut down its platform. We were the first Christian faith-based hip hop BDS radio station. And we ultimately uh, helped and aided in BDS creating a first ever Christian hip internet radio Christian hip hop chart, right? But since then it's closed down and now it's all media based, but we were the first station in the history of gospel um, that was hip hop based to be recognized as gospel hip hop station of the year, you know, um, because of what we're doing. We have roughly 1.6 million listeners, about 22 shows across the United States, spanning from Boston to New York, to Atlanta, to Houston, to Miami, to Vegas um, uh, and, um, and, and Los Angeles. And so what we did was, um, the, the the reason behind it was because the culture of Christian rap or gospel rap really didn't have radio for them. Right. You know, when it came to gospel, it was either traditional or that non-contemporary, but more like, you know, more leaning towards traditional. So therefore, we were alienated, which is why we were never able to get on the Billboard charts. So we were never, never able to get on anything substantial that count that would make us relevant in the eyes of those that deem these things to make us relevant. Yeah, yeah sure. We put on the work for God, but at the same time, you're still trying to elevate the culture. And um, so that wasn't happening. And when we did that, we said, you know, my, my uh, business partner, me and Chantal, our whole objective was, you know, let's go within the culture. So if we do radio for the culture, by the culture, you know what I mean? It'd be, you know, people will listen. So we went after, you know, those that were prominent figureheads in the culture and said, hey, let's take whatever it is you're doing and create a radio show around it. And before you know it, we won a stellar award. You oh, know? oh, so you are award winning God's house of hip hop. Huh? Yes, not only <laughs> the stellar awards, but we've won... 15 gospel spin awards. Oh, you know? oh, so, you know, so at the end of the day, we, we're out here, but you know, and, and the whole purpose of that is to let people know that one faith-based hip hop is relevant. Kingdom hip hop is relevant and it's not something to be slept on. And when you go and win these things, people start to see that, Oh, there's, it's more than just a genre of music. There's actually substance there. Talk to me about changing mindsets because one of the things that some individuals in my era, when we look at hip hop, we say, okay, there's, there's, a, there's the misogyny, there's the explicitness, there's a negative side of hip hop 
that some people don't necessarily want to touch. We understand the storytelling. We understand how some people feel. Uh, but you've taken that, you've taken that, the best part of hip hop, and then you've also said, okay, it's faith, it's it's faith based, and we can we can praise God in the same idiom, and we can change some minds because this is not all that hip hop is, that kind of negativity and so forth that, that some people see when they hear hip hop. Yeah, well, I mean, we can, we, can, we can treat gospel that way. So let's look at the gospel hymns from the 1920s. Okay. Versus the gospel hymns of the 1980s, of the 1990s. I guarantee you those in the 20s, if they would have heard what's going down in the 90s, would have said, that's the devil's music. <laughs> Right. They would have yeah. been like all that riffing and running and all those harmonies is not of God. Yeah. 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 You see, so it's like when you put that, you know, I, 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 it's just, it just boggles my mind how gospel moves the, they'll move the field goal. They'll move the goalpost for them. Yes. You know what I'm saying? But when it comes to us, they don't do that. And keep in mind, we glorify God, you know, I, I, Hezekiah Walker has a song, every praise is to my God, right? So, but, yes. you know, it's a repetition, repetition type song. You know, he gives you, you know, some few, few, uh, a few hymns and you sing and then you come back to the every praise. So basically the, the, the melody is every praise. Yes. But with us, we give you a whole story about how God brought us through. Yeah. We give you a whole, we give you a whole story and every praise. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, it's like, why should my story or my gospel be irrelevant? Ain't gospel, don't gospel mean the good news? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Right, so if I'm giving you good news and God brought me through, why is that not relevant? Especially when you're not speaking to my people or to okay. people like me. All right. right. So at yeah. the end of the day, it's, it's like, you know, when you go out with, in Vegas, every casino got a different type of food in it. Yeah. Oh, you can eat in Vegas. Right, right. right. So yeah. do you boy do you boycott one place because they put pepper on their chicken? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you know what I mean? So you have to look at it at this stand. You know, so maybe the, the, the hip hop doesn't appeal to you, but that doesn't mean it's not relevant. Maybe gospel R and B doesn't appeal to the you know the quartet, but that doesn't mean it's not relevant. See, the problem with gospel, we have to get into the mode of where it's relevant. And when it becomes inclusive, then we can truly be one body. All right. I like that. Now, recently, you traveled to my home state of Virginia. There were a lot of big time gospel stars there, gospel superstars, individuals who are extremely relevant in that genre. And you conducted a few master classes. Talk to us about the master classes content what you were trying to get across so the conference was the gin uh national conference so gin uh g-i-n is gospel industry network right and the whole purpose of that is to uh help bridge the gap with all the genres whether it's quartet choir hip-hop whatever and, and and this year they had an emphasis on hip-hop so me canton jones uh was there you know to you know, to, I guess, as ambassadors for the hip hop side, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, but not only that, but you ambassador, had Ambassador, ambassador MC now. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had Vicky, Vicky Mack was in the building, you know what I mean? Who's a prominent, she, you know, Vicky changed gospel, believe yeah. it or not. You see what I'm saying? We had Liz Black who won a stellar award. You had Earl Bynum, you had Lucinda. Like there was a whole lot, Pastor, um, um, I would say Bishop Kenneth Wells, you know, it was the figurehead that led, you know, led the movement. But the reason I was there was because one, I had to, you know, it was a matter of just not educating the people on hip hop because a lot of people still, you know, they either like it or they don't. Right. But it was yes. more or less educating people on the business of music. I just launched a master class called Music Release University, right? And yes. what Music Release University, it goes, it coincides with my book, Music Release University, The Indies Guide to Releasing Music. So my whole thing is I've been in the music business for 33 years. 94 is when I had my first billboard hit. I'm still here in almost 2024. Yeah. On top of the game. 
right? Yes, it ain't yes. by happenstance. It ain't because my music is the greatest. It ain't because this, that, and the third. I took the knowledge that I gained, the wisdom that I gained through all of my years in the music game and brought it to Christian hip hop and then imp you know, implemented that, right? So once you once I implemented that, it, it showed people that, okay, we can go and achieve you know, good you know, sales records and great records and not really be stuck in the gospel box. Because keep, you know, keep in mind that gospel, the gospel thing, it could be collusionary. You know, yes. that's a word I made up, by the way. So collusion, <laughs> right? Collusion. <laughs> so, you know, because at the end of the day, they, you know, there's they got their favorites and 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 they and they got packs. And in those packs is who they promote and market. You know, it's nothing against that. If you my friend and I want you to succeed, I'm going to promote and market you. You know, and, and so I went there to say, hey, here's how this is done if you do it right. You know, the pro it, I'll, I put the um, one of my things is the five P's proper preparation prevents poor performance. Yes. Yeah. Right? So yes. at the end of the day, it's like if you're properly prepared to win, you're going to win. Now, see, now, I, I, I love that you 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 giving us you giving us a lot of great information here. Mm -hmm. Listen, if you're listening to this. If you're listening to this, he is telling you how to succeed. He's telling you that when people like you, they want to see you succeed. When people like you, they want to see you get paid. When people like you, they want to see the spotlight shine on you. The question is, how do you, how do you get to this point that you are like? How do you work? with people? How do you inspire people? How do you get individuals who say, I need to know this guy. I want to be this guy's friend. Listen, he also told you this. You have to be prepared. Just wanting it isn't enough. Thanks. You have to understand the details. If you want to be successful, you have to have, what did he talk about? He said implementation, where you have to have a plan to implement. You have to be prepared and you have to be ready. You have to be ready to give and present your own masterclass. Now I'm breaking this down because he's <laughs> running through it. I want you to understand. He yeah. said that I'm here because. I understand how to get it done, and it's not just luck. Right. I'm going to give you another nugget, right? So in my book, I talk about SWOT analysis. You familiar with SWOT analysis? Yes, I am. Yes. So yes. SWOT analysis is normally applicable to businesses where if I'm coming in, I'm investing in you, I want to know that so you let's understand. talk about, let's tell them what SWOT means. I am. I'm, I'm getting to that. Okay. So it's like, if I, so I'm saying if I come to you, I want to know that you understand the SWAT of your company so you know how to troubleshoot. So SWAT, S-W-O-T, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Yes. Right. So I take that and I say, okay, why not make that applicable to yourself? What are your strengths? What and if you can't be honest with you, then you ain't going nowhere. What are your weaknesses? What then you take that and make it applicable to whatever genre or industry you're getting in. Because once you understand the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, you're going to succeed because you you already had the blueprint on how to succeed. You'll know where to go, where not to go. So I'm in the music business. I'm in the faith-based hip-hop. Who's the strongest Christian rapper? Who the weakest? Why are they the weakest? What did they not do that I that I shouldn't do, that I should do? What did they do that I shouldn't do? You know what I mean? When it comes to DJs in my genre, who's the strongest? Who's the, who's the weakest? Maybe I need to go to them because they be more apt to listen to my record and play my record. So if I go to like 30 week DJs, according to the research and analysis, then I just got 30 spins yeah. versus that one major DJ who might not even give me a look. Yeah. So yeah. I use SWOT analysis on everything I do, which is why I'm succeeding because I never go in not prepared. Okay, I love this. So talk to talk to our audience about this SWOT analysis. Let's talk about the best in the business, but maybe that best isn't getting all the shine. Maybe that best isn't the most successful. Why is one guy who is extremely good at what he does, but not necessarily 
the most successful and another guy who might be pretty good, all right, but he is having a lot of commercial success. Talk to us about that. Well, that, that guy's probably properly prepared. Yeah. He did the research. He understood the navigation. You see, so at the end of the day, when you get in your car, let's say I'm going to, I'm in LA, so I'm going to Hollywood, right? Yes. I go to Hollywood, I take the freeways I know versus I can also go to ways and ways will get me there quicker. Yes, it will. Yes, it you will. You see what I'm saying? So at yes. the end of the day, it's like I said, okay, let me, let me, let me troubleshoot and navigate within the system so that I can win. Now, a person that's very gifted, they might get in their own way because they very gifted. They think they know everything. Even me to this day, as successful as I am, I don't know everything. Right. So I'm constantly putting SWAT on everything. Anything I come out when I came out with my book, I didn't know. I put SWAT on it. It became a number one book on Amazon. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So I and that's you know what I mean. So at the end of the day, if you if just because you're talented, it don't mean you success, you're gonna be successful. Because with that talent, you still have to implement 110% of the work. Yes, yes. You see what I mean? And and that work includes marketing. Are you prepared for marketing? Are you prepared? Are you are you prepared to service the radio? Because there's no freemiums, even if there's a freemium on it. Yes, yes. So you let me put it. Let me put the, Let me put this another way for our listening audience. There's show, and then there's business, and yeah. you have to be great at the business. And just being good at the show will not make you a success. Make sure that you understand the business side how it works, how it operates. We all know we've sat, up, we've sat in our living room, watched the TV and said, I know 10 guys who are better than him. But he's on TV, he's selling the records, he's making the money. Why? Because somebody in his circle or he understands the business. I'll just Listen. put it this way. Let me, let me tap in. Yes. So Steve Jobs was ahead of what? Uh, Apple, right? Yes. He was ahead of Apple. Steve Ballmer bought the Clippers. Yes. So I say this to say you're only as good as your team. Steve Ballmer was an executive with them. He wasn't a CEO, but he still bought the Clippers for $2 billion. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So, you know, so it's, I'm saying that surround yourself with great people. Don't be afraid to be led. There's a book, The 22 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. Yes. Right? One of the laws is, you know, a, a great leader is determined by uh, the leaders he developed, even if those leaders are greater leaders than he or she. Right? Yes. At the end of the day, you got you you got to be able to be led to lead. Yes, you do. Listen, there is there is a there is a law called the law of association. And what that law says is that you are going to be like the five people you choose to hang around. For the next, in the next five years, you are going to be like the five people that you choose to hang around. You are going to drive about the same kind of car. You're going to make about the same kind of money. You're going to live in about the same kind of house. You are going to have about the same kind of success. So one of the things that you have to do, if you want to be great, you must associate yourself with greatness. Understand yep. that you have to put yourself in the environment that generates greatness, that generates the kind of thing that you want to generate and put you where you want to be. I understand now why you would, why, why you were conducting this master class. Listen, I wish we had all day. Get great with your time. What would you like to leave our listening audience with? Well, there's a few things. I can't talk about my acting because I'm with SAG after. So all the you know, I've been in 12 movies and TV shows this year, and I it's just sad that I can't talk about them. And they've been on primetime television. So that's one. Um, two, I'm a cook. So I got a uh -huh. TV show coming in which I'm cooking, but I got seasoning. So I just launched a brand new seasoning called Nice, uh, Nice Blend and Nice and Savory. You can go to ValidoFoods.com and get that face and spice. So if you ever check out any of my Instagrams or my TikToks, you'll see that I throw down in the kitchen. You know All right. I mean? All so right. 
I leave I leave you with that. And then um, so I got the book, my I, I don't know if you know I created the first African American animated music uh series on Netflix. It Ooh, is I now didn't on know so it's now on Amazon Prime and Apple TV called The Jammies. So I come from a lineage of animation. My uncle, Ron Husband, a UNLV alum, a UNLV <laughs> Hall of Famer, was the first black animator ever at Disney. Oh, so, that is great. Right, that, so, that's yeah. history. I love that. Right, so yeah. the running, uh, here's another nugget for you. The Running Rebels, they won a national championship, correct? Yes. yes. In basketball. My cousin, Stacy Ogman, was on that team. Oh, you know I mean? so, oh you're related to Stacy. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, Love so, Stacey, um, but, you know, so I leave people with that. And here's some wisdom for you. For any great achievement, someone has to be the first to do it. So why not you? Strive for perfection so that you limit your mistakes. We're not perfect people. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to make the, you know, we're going to have uh, uh, these these inconsistencies, but if you're constantly striving to be the best you that you can be, then you're gonna win. And get that amen right there, featuring Ken Jones and uh, and Everett Drake by MC Nice. Amen, amen, amen. You heard it here on Keeping It 100 with Mel and Bruce, sponsored by the 100 Black Men of Las Vegas. It was MC Nice, and that's Keeping It 100. Keeping It 100. <laughs>